Hello, my name is Matt Irwin, and welcome to my review of Tomb Raider 2018, adaption of the 2013 game. So, since it's the adaption of the 2013 game, you will see similarities to that game, and it, it is kind of fine, and it does remind me of the game, which is the adaption, of course. And usually, I do not see video game movies, there's a lot of video game movies that have came out, but I don't play those games normally. But since I played the Tomb Raider 2013, and I played the sequel to it as well. It got me really excited to actually go see it. I did have a lot of fun. I yeah, it was just really excited to see this one. And I went and see a tin. I saw an IMAX as a test for Avengers Infinity War. We'll see how that goes. Oh, IMAX is very loud. We'll see what happens. So before I begin the review, with video games being like their own movie, it's almost like why should we have a movie about the video games that we already saw or an adaptation or Video games are their own movie sometimes, like with Tomb Raider and also like The Last of Us, which I recently just watched. I just watched the cutscenes. Almost every video game is online, so you can go and watch them. And I just watched The Last of Us, and I had quite the fun time just watching that instead of playing the game, which I did play the game, which I, which I did play the game like twice, twice last year. So, it's pretty fun to watch this cutscene. They, you can watch Tomb Raider cutscenes from 2013. And 2015 or 2015, whatever, this one came out. Well, go we'll watch cutscenes and you got your whole movie. I, I know you want to get your box office, whatever, or something like that. Like, move studio money. So, enough about my adventures, and now let's move on to the review. So, we do hear a narration game about Himiko and, like, curse of, like, death that will be sent her away. But we, the problem with that is that we hear this same lore or ancient history of Himiko later on. I think it's Laura reading it, or Dad, Mr. Croft reading it over again, and I don't know, maybe they should do a narration. Like, I remember Himiko in the game, she had the same thing, I think, like, not like the, the death, but she wanted to be resurrected, and he used Laura's friend Sam, that was Asian as well, for that ritual in the game. This is a different patient of the game, it's a lot better. I do find the movie fine, like, like I said, yeah, I, I, why do two narrations? I don't think they do that in other movies, unless it's video game movies, or bad movies, or something like that. So, now we cut to present day, to Laura, and I do find myself thinking, like, is this a Tomb Raider movie? Because there's a lot of, like, parkour -ish stuff when like she has to like get money by doing the spiking like where she gets 500 pounds or whatever like she gets to the finish line she wins and gets 500 pounds or whatever and then like she gets her backpack like taken away like i know this is an origin movie but i wanted to see the tomb raider movie not the parkour movie so yeah it just drags for me to get what i want to see so as she does the bike chase or to get 500 pounds of money or whatever. She ends up bumping into a police car and getting arrested and then her stepmom or stepmom, since this is England, you say mom and of mom, bails her out. And her stepmom uh, questioning her like, why she did this and then Laura says that she needed the money for it. and then she goes like, you're rich, you, you have to sign these papers for her to, to keep the Croft family name in, in the company business so all that stuff in the Croft Manor won't get repoed. I think it's Found the right repo or take it away from the bank, something like that. But she believes that it's not her money; it's her father's money that she, that her father inherited because her father passed away a couple of years ago. Which gets me thinking, like, why do this? So you, you know, you can inherit it, right? That's what happens when you inherit your money, or unless she, she thinks it's on her own because she didn't work at it for herself. But so it's still free money; you can get it. You know, you know that, right? I'll take free money. So Laura thinks about it and then decides to do it. So she goes to like Croft Industry, her father's building, talks to her stepmom and, and talks to her father's lawyer and then her father's lawyer gives her like this box that it's like a puzzle box and like she like solves it because she knew how to do all this stuff because she's been trained to do it as a kid and then like, you know solves it like a key and a whole photo and like a note pops out of it and then she decides to go oh she I think mean, she did sign the papers and she goes to Croft Manor and goes to the Croft Memorial and she finds the keyhole in one of the Croft family tombs and finds all her dad's stuff or her dad's is a bat cave. Nah, not really. <laughs> a rich person having a secret cave is kind of a bat cave. 
So, Laura finds a bunch of passports for her dad's face, but all the names are different. And she finds a videotape of her dad, looks at it, and her dad talks about Kimiko and, like, resurrecting like, his wife over the wall, I think. Something like, something like that. Just don't really pay attention to that part. Because, did they say that she talks about death, or it takes death away? Unless he was trying to, like, find magic to reverse it, that's what I was thinking about, maybe. Yeah. That part just not too clear. So Laura does find like a, another paper that like about some guy named Wong, Chang Hong. I don't really know if I don't pronounce that right. So Laura has to plan to go to China to look for this guy. So she sells her pendant to get more cash, which or pounds, how you ever say it in British terms. Which I don't know why she needs to sell her pendant where she has money of her own. Like. Does she think about, like, this is the problem I have, though. Really. It's the beginning part, most likely. Like, the parkour, her selling her own stuff to get money. This is the part I have more of a problem with. I think in the game, she, like, lives in an apartment by herself. In this one, not the first one. Or, or who knows, she could be living in a dorm in the first one. So if she goes to Asia, or, yeah, or China, then we see that Chase Shant talked about earlier, like, yada yada yada, she finds Wong Sun, like, and then they go off on an adventure, and he's also a drunk too. So yeah, they're going on an adventure, and she talks to Wong about Himiko and like about the stuff that the curse and banish her to an island because she was spreading death all around. That's what was happening again. Maybe he also explained that island is also forbidden to go to because like because of the curse. So then there's a storm, like someone else wrote it at the game, but she's more prepared this time in this iteration of it. And then we've been, I think we start seeing more things like, like the game. If you ever play the game, like you probably have because you're watching the video, um, you know, like she gets, I think he's also in like in the last of us, like, like you're, you're trying to get up and then like you get hit in the back of the head by somebody and you just sort of like survive like awful water wave thing or something like that. You survive a bunch of zombies or whatever or demons, aliens, <laughs> whatever, and then you get hit in the back of the head. And that's something similar that like, felt very familiar, like, in a way. So she gets captured by some people. This one guy I can't remember his name. That was that's trying to find uh Himiko's tomb and also he knows her dad. It's Trinity, like in the game. We have references in the game. It's like there's stuff like in the game, like Trinity and other things like Himiko and like similar things and it's like oh, at least they're trying they're trying or something. Yeah, so this guy I can't remember his name and it's like he's like from the Walking Dead probably. I don't know the, the actor, I don't know. He looks like the guy, the main guy. I don't watch him like because I heard crap by other people. <laughs> so uh, he also has like a bunch of Chinese slaves, but they're more Asian slaves, or like, it could be mixed. I don't know if it is Chinese or it could be Japanese or it could be all around. And then he also like goes to to like lower stuff because he was finds like and that, all the notes that Mr. Croft had about Himiko's tomb, and he goes and finds it so he knows the way. And then Laura ends up escaping with the help of Wong, I think. I do remember her escaping and then we go after her and she falls down a waterfall or whatever or something like that. And then we get like more similar things to the game, like, like with the plane. Well, with the plane in the game, she just hides out in there. She's not like trying to jump on something. With the game in the plane, she needs like medical equipment because she got like a bullet in her stomach or whatever or side. With the movie, it's like she just jumps on it and I think the plane also falls down. She gets a parachute and then that's how she survives. She doesn't fall down the waterfall, she falls in the parachute. And then, like, once she's, like, in the forest and trying to get back to the place, she finds all some of the goons that were trying to, like, find her again. She does end up killing one of them. And then there is a moment, like, how in the game, with that one guy was trying to sexually assault her, and then she gets sad and, like, wants to vomit. And, like, I guess in the game, but in the movie, it's, like, she's sad for, like, a second, like, which is good. Like, and she, then she, she's similar to the forest and starts running off. It's just, like, a second. Like, I think she needs some more time. And there's a lot of like that with this movie. I still like it like, like a thousand more times. I still like it, but it's like it's just like it needs to like not do all that stuff. I know it's I know it's an action movie. Some good action movies take their time with some things, and what people adjusting with things to be just did, like killing somebody. I know it's just a movie, but so like you need to time to it. Just these are normal people first. We're not like watching like a like a murder or whatever or something like that. Or we're just watching a normal person like trying to find her father, and then she kills someone never really did before, and then makes her sad, and then we need time to adjust this stuff, like, as the audience, and also, like, the character that we see. 
Thanks to Justice as well. Kind of like the scene, but it's not like emotionally impacted as we think. Dun, 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 in this movie, which kind of gets a little bit repetitive through some of the times, but it's kind of annoying. Which was a lot more like serious and took some of the time. Well, so the guy that she tried to like chase that after that scene is it her father. He was on this island this whole time, and he can't leave because he needs boats, and the guy that's working for Trinity is, has the radio that can, like, get him off the island, he's not allowed to, and the only and the guy's not allowed to leave until he finds Himiko's stuff, or stuff for Himiko. So he's not allowed to leave, and that's it all. He can't see his family. So her father tells, like, why did you come here? Like, why did you not destroy the stuff? Like, I told you in the video. Yeah, he, so in the video, like, he sent to Laura, said to destroy all of his research, don't come, don't look for me, whatever, or if I'm lost, that's what he said. She, obviously, she ignored it. We wouldn't have this movie. So, and he also gave false information about, like, where Himiko is, because he knows the real truth of Himiko, about how, about death that Himiko brings to everyone else. So, after Laura's father talks about all that stuff, about, like, him making counterfeit locations to find Himiko, and she decides, like, we have to help these people, like, Escape the island. Like, no, there's no way off getting off this island without that radio. And she goes, like, if you're not gonna do it, then I have to do it myself. Then she goes off. She, there's the bow and arrow we saw, and she carries it in the game. <laughs> Trying to get this because they had the bow and arrow, and everyone knocked down. Because she's badass. But yeah, I don't have like a Lord Croft or whatever. So I use the Pink Ranger right here. At least she has a bow and arrow. She knocked down all the Rangers. Because we tried the crater. They're all guys too. Because they all, like, you know, the yellow guy version of the, the Yellow Ranger. Just minor really quick. <laughs> yeah, she goes to the camp again. And you do see some more familiar, like, video game vibes. Like how it kind of makes you want to play the game as well. It, or it's like you're playing the game as well. So yeah, her sneaking around just reminds me of. The video games and all that great stuff from the video games. And she gets Swan, she wants help to take down a lot of these other goons, try and get all these other people out of there, escape finally, take the radio and finally escape. And then there's a lot of like fighting and stuff that I run into the forest. Wong and Laura show people, they shoot back and yeah, yeah, yeah. And then her father goes up to the tomb. I don't know why he disobeyed his own orders to, or, yeah, I guess he wanted to, like, just, oh, he wanted to destroy the tomb, that's what it, it was. But how can you just, if you destroy that tomb, you just want to open it, within it? Or the, the puzzle box that's on the tomb, and you can destroy it like that, and no one can open it. But then, the other guy that kept her from earlier shows up, and like, hey, you can't do that. And then, guy that wants to open the tomb wants to op make him open the tomb or he'll die and then like he won't do it and I'll shoot you if you do it and then Laura comes and like doesn't want to see her father die so she offers her help to open the tomb because she doesn't want to see her father die and then it's like the giant version of the puzzle from earlier that the key was in or in the picture and the note that was in and then she opens the tomb and then we get a lot more puzzles inside the tomb about like like there's like a like a floor that's closing in or like falling apart and then yeah like find the matching color to stop all the needles or like spikes going through people's skulls all that fun tomb stuff that you see in other movies probably <laughs> um what else do I there's a lot of cannon bar ca cannon fire or cannon fodder or other people that just die because you can't have the main character die. It's just like people don't care about like. So they find the tomb and then they open it and then like. And Laura also figured out that the reason why he goes right here is not because they cast her away. It's because she wanted to go away because she brings death and decay. And it turns one of the people into like a zombie. It's like all that stuff is like a curse. She has like magic. So they bring magic into this, like how in the game has magic. The Himiko in that one wanted to be re resurrected, but this one wants to spread more death. And that's why, uh, the the, bit, the villain of this movie or whatever, I keep on saying that guy. The villain like takes a piece of the bone and like, took it off and then, cause then the other goons like try and fight Laura a little bit and then Laura picks up her like that. The pickaxe from the game kills one of them, the head in the tomb or whatever, puts the head in the tomb and then they turn to another zombie or whatever, decaying person. 
Yeah, so Laura goes off, took it off to it, like, to the villain of the movie, and then give us a little fight. It's like, I wanted to see more bone arrow action. I think there's like a little, little bit. That's what the 2013 was about, because of the bone arrow action, and like, so much. It's also in the last of us, bone arrow action. Pink Ranger also has bone arrow action. They advertise that a lot in the neuro promos or in trailers. It's just not in it that much. Well, like, what she does fight with the villain of the movie or Trinity operative, whatever. She does, like, throat punch him and or throat kicks him and kicks him in the ball as well. <laughs> that was that good. <laughs> it's a plus for me. So then, like, she, like, kicks the bone that was in the bag that he had. That was like be a weapon of like decay, destroy it, all her enemies. Puts the bow in her in his mouth and pushes him off the cliff because the, the cliff has a bunch of dead bodies on it, dead skeletons or Himiko's servants that. And was, there's more chasing before that happens uh, with the other with the other goons. Yeah, that's what happens. I mean, she grabs the little pickaxe and kills one of them, and the other one's still alive, and then she goes through all these dead bodies and like. Fight an Aaron and she fights the other guy. And then that's the movie, and they get off the island. The end of the movie, because she goes back to the pawn shop people, give back her necklace with her actual money, which she could have done in the first place. It gets two guns, like how in the original Tomb Raider. That part was in the trailer, and the lead Tomb Raider style, original Tomb Raider. Yeah, but I still like the movie, and I give it a score. I mean, it's not that bad. It's not, I would say, it's not that bad. It's not the best thing or the worst thing. It's just fine. So, what did you think of this 2018 Tomb Raider reboot adaptation of the 2013 video game? Please leave a comment down below, give me a like, your last out, and subscribe for more. I've been that been one, and see you later, movie goers. One quick note: every other ranger fell down except for the blue one over there. Right there. It's probably because David Yost and what's her name? Amy Jo Johnson are good friends, that's why. Because she didn't want to like knock out her friend.